what if? Ah, there we go. Now we're recording. What if? Just what if we had the ability to find a pro a business professional whose customers all day every day he was able to identify that these customers were in need of a real estate agent. See, that's the difference between this upstream partner and Susie. Because some people are like, okay, I get it. Like, yeah, my A plus clients, the ones that refer me every year, those are my, those are upstream partners. Not really. By definition, and I created the definition, so I get to, I get to, I, I get to define it, right? The, by definition, it's a business professional whose job uncovers the fact that their clients are going to be needing a real estate agent next. Just like with an architect, right? All day, every day, they're meeting with clients and their clients are going to need a builder next. So who is this in real estate? We're going to get to that here in just a second. But this isn't, because you see what happens with Susie is that although we love Susie and we get a referral every year out of Susie like clockwork, the reality is Susie, her conversations all day, every day are really centered around Susie's life. They're not centered around customers, clients, and because of what she does for a living, uncovering the fact that they're going to need a real estate agent, right? So that's the difference between an upstream partner and just a good, a good friend who's a great referral partner, right? Upstream means that their business is situated such just prior to a real estate transaction, okay? So I went about doing what, what most people would think, like, oh, okay, great, that person can send me a lot of business. And I showed up like a solicitor. And guess what? How do you think I got treated? Like a solicitor, right? When we show up like a solicitor, we get treated like a solicitor. So here's what I did. I walked into that architect's office with a stack of cards, my shiny new brochure, right? And uh, I was there excited because I was going to tell him what he'd been missing out on. His name was Ken. I walked into Ken's office. You can picture this, right? Young guy, dressed a little bit better than most builders. And I'm like, I'm, I'm here to see Ken. Is Ken in? And the secretary at the front desk, she said, um, yeah, can I, can I, can I ask, or, or do you have an appointment? And in my mind, I thought, oh, I should have had an appointment. <laughs> and then she said, um, can, I, can I tell him who's, who's here? Does he know you? Like, no, he doesn't know me. But um, yeah, my name is Justin. I'm with Evergreen Custom. You know, I've got a home building company. And uh, anyway, um, Ken finally came out several minutes later and I could tell Ken was a little impatient like I'm not quite sure who you are what you're about as I began to, to, to hand him a stack of my cards and introduce myself I could tell that Ken was not having a great time what I was essentially saying is Ken will you be the salesperson for my company I'm not going to pay you but I'm really excited to bring you on board and I would love it if you would give each and every one of your clients one of my cards and tell them good things about me now, if you were Ken, would you, would you want that job? <laughs> Probably not, right? Probably not. So my question to you is, has anybody ever done that to you? Have you ever had a home inspector come in and be like, hey, I inspect homes. Here's a stack of my cards. As if they think that they're solving our problems when really they're solving their own problems, right? We've all been on the other side of it, whether it's lender, whether it's title, whether it's so, so the concept is great. And my, like my idea was, was awesome, but my execution was pathetic. It was very one-sided. It was very selfish. It was very much about, hey, I'm here to solve your problem. No, I wasn't. I was there to solve my problem, which is I didn't have enough homes to build at the time. Okay. So, but I did uncover the fact that, oh my goodness, I'm onto something here because man, every one of Ken's clients are going to need a builder next. What I realized is that rather than building this giant database that was frankly wearing me out. Now, if you already have a big database, fantastic. Continue to take care of it. If it's working, do not stop doing it. Over time, I'll teach you how to begin to replace some of those inefficient ways with something better. But this is the model that I uncovered, is that rather than having a big database with a small number of referrals, I could have a small database with a few, a few very key professionals. And those few professionals could give me a lot of business. Okay, that sound better? Think about the efficiencies. Think about the time that you can invest back into serving your clients. Think about the time that you could invest back into your loved ones, right? Like rather than out courting 100 people, 90 of whom will do nothing for you this year in warm market. Now I know that sounds very selfish, but we have to take a look at the ROI. I'm not saying you shouldn't have friends, but when we disguise that with this is the best way to get business, sometimes it's not, okay? Sometimes it's not. 
And we have to ask ourselves, what if I were to reallocate those 90 conversations that aren't going to turn into business this year, reallocate just a few of them to people who could send me a lot of business? Does that sound like a better use of time? Again, I'm not down in warm market. I'm not down in cold market. I'm just saying maybe there's an alternative market here. Maybe there's a market that says, I'm going to take the very best of warm market, where it's a relationship-based business, and I'm going to take the very best of cold market, which is it's scalable, and I can go turn it on quickly. Take those two and merge them together. Instead of, do I go warm or do I go cold? Well, I'll go warm until I run out of warm, and then I'll go cold. What if there were a third bucket we could pull from? Right? That's the upstream model. Rather than hunting these, these golden eggs, let's go find a golden goose. Now, I was a little embarrassed about a month ago when somebody said, hey, Justin, right in the middle of the presentation, that's not a golden goose, that's a golden, that's a duck. <laughs> now, I'm from Oregon, right? We're, we're duck fans up here. And so I was like, well, I guess I've got my duck glasses on. But like, needless to say, right, you get the point, right? A gold, we'll, we'll call this a golden goose for, for, for today's purposes. You get the point, right, that we can go out sorting, 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 trying to find those 10. Or we can go find the one who can deliver us the 10. Wouldn't it be better to get 10 more deals this year to go find one person, add big value to them, versus going out and trying to find 100 people and offer friendship to them and hopefully that that comes in. Now, I'm all about friendships, but frankly, we just run out of time, right? So this is the essence of it, is we go find the one, right? Or the couple of people who can send us a lot of business. You're gonna be in conversations anyway. You and I both know that the way to sell more homes is to be in more conversations with people about real estate. But how we get to those people that wanna talk about real estate, this is a faster path to that. This is the cheat code, right? This is a way for you to get there faster. Now, you might be asking, lovely concept, Justin, but how do you do this? You just told me how you hit your head against a brick wall, right, on this attempt, which maybe some of you have had that similar experience. You're like, oh, an estate attorney, hmm, bankruptcy attorney, hmm, a lender, hmm, CPA, hmm, insurance agent, hmm, right? Uh, property manager, hmm, right? I'm throwing out a couple ideas for you here about who might be an upstream partner. You might be like, I approached them and it didn't work. I didn't get anything back. It may have been because you took the same approach that I had took when I, when I entered that architect's office. So right now I'm gonna teach you the five steps of how to do this properly, okay? Now I hope that from this call, you have enough to go out and create an upstream partner that changes your life. Like, if that happens, please let me know. It would warm my heart. Like, it would, that's, that, that drives me, right, to hear that. If by chance you're like, I think I'm almost close, but if I could spend just a couple minutes with you and ask a couple questions to see how I might approach that person, if that's you, then, um, then, then, then you're, sorry, I'm jumping over a couple slides here for time's sake. Um, this link right here, if you're not on your phone, will give you access to my calendar, 15 minutes, and I'll, I'll answer, for 15 minutes, I'll give you my all on what I would do to take the next step with your next upstream partner, okay? So, but, but in this conversation, you may have somebody in your mind that's like, oh my goodness, I really think that professional could send me a lot of business and I just don't wanna, I don't wanna mess it up, right? I realize if I mess it up, it's gonna be hard to recover. So, can you just give me a little bit of guidance? Like, I would love to, guys. This is, this is my life, this is what I love to do. So again, there's no cost, to, like this is just me pouring into you for 15 minutes, helping you take the next step to, to unlocking your next upstream partner, right? Okay, I'm gonna keep rolling here. So if this is interesting to you, interest to you. Now, if you, if you didn't get this and this scan thing doesn't work for you, just message me on, on, on um, Instagram and we'll figure it out, okay? But I'd love to answer your questions, even if it's just messaging you through Instagram, like I'm happy to help, okay? All right. Five steps, we're gonna hit them fast. Step number one is you need to identify who you want to work with. I'll give you a prime example. I had one client who came into our coaching circle on a, on a given week and she said, Justin, I'm getting referrals from a divorce attorney. And someone else in our coaching group said, oh my goodness, brilliant idea. I know one, right? Went out, a couple weeks back they came back and said, I got a referral as well and I don't like it. It's really sad to me. Like divorces are sad to me, right? And they're like, I don't, like I got referrals coming but they're not, not really the referrals that I want. And the other agent who was getting them, she's like, no, no, I disagree. I went through a divorce and it's really hard. Like it rocked my world. And that's my, my mission. Like I, I get to actually help people through that. Let them know like, hey, this isn't the end. This is the end of that, that bad relationship, but we're moving on to something better. Like she can breathe hope into them, right? And like get them excited about, about what's next. She said, it's, 
it merges a great business opportunity with my the heart the, like the work of my heart right and that's where business gets really fun and that's that's why i'm here with you guys right is it i get to do the work that i love is helping you how to get time back how to build a great business without forfeiting your family right that's why that this is my heart work okay so you got to ask yourself the question who do i want to work with is it first time home buyers now you got to have to ask yourself is it a good business opportunity right now for same home buyers may or may not be right you may have figured it out other you might be like it's real tough right now right it might be people who are who are moving into their dream home like that's who i like to serve it might be investors it might be move up buyers right who have some equity to play in this market it might be people like selling their final home and moving into an assisted care you love that demographic i don't know who it is you're gonna have to uncover that and you don't have to have all the answers at first. It could just be a hunch. Like that client, I loved working with them. I get warm my heart helping them through that process. Find out the who. And then the next question is this, you guys, is who is a professional? Who is a business professional who already has a relationship with that person? Okay, it's really quite simple. We're just simply reverse engineering. Who do I want to work with? Who already has the relationship? Because we've identified that building those relationships ourselves and getting to those people is difficult. But if we know the gatekeeper, the person who already works with those people all day long, and we can go find that one person that can open the door to us time after time after time, month after month, potentially week after week, wouldn't that be amazing? Our dream clients just brought to us, right? Sounds pretty good. So, so number one, identify who, and then, and then identify the who that can get you to the who. Again, if you have questions, I'd love to chat later. The next is you need to show up as a rock star, okay? When I showed up in Ken Harris's office, I was not a rock star. I was a solicitor. Lo and behold, I got treated like one, right? Friend, like in a, in a courteous way, but I was dismissed from his office and nothing ever came of that, okay? So the way to do this is to seek a warm introduction. If you're trying to get to a CPA, if you're trying to get to a whatever, an insurance agent, right? You either know the person or better, somebody who you know knows this person, okay? And I'll, I'll teach you this script exactly how to look at the relationships you already have to get to the relationships that you want to have. Very simple process, works like clockwork when done correctly, okay? So it's not only saying, hey, will you introduce me to your friend who's a property manager? because your friend will probably do a lousy job. They'll be like, oh, hey, this is my, this is my buddy. Uh, we, were, we were drinking buddies in college, and I think he has his real estate license now. Like, he's a really good dude. You should meet with him, right? That's not how you want to be introduced, folks, right? You want to craft that introduction. Ask for permission to get the introduction, and then you're going to say, right, can I be a part of that introduction? Can, can, I, can I, just so I don't sound like every other agent, because I'm not, I'd love to just give you a couple bio points, a couple, couple bullet points on how to, how to have me sound different, okay? So seek a warm introduction, okay? Now, there's, there's another alternative here, which is if you already have brand celebrity, right? if you already have a massive presence online, um, if you already have that these upstream partners already know you because of who you are, your, your name in the community, your name online, whatever, then you, it gets a little bit easier for you, right? But if you don't have that, don't worry about it. An introduction oftentimes gets you there just as quick, okay? But there's a couple options there. Okay, but the key to, to step three working, you guys, is it that somebody else has to sell you before you ever step in that meeting. Because the reason why step three most times does not work is because you show up and you have to talk about yourself. You have to sell yourself. And what happens when somebody starts to sell to us? The walls go up and we're like, eek, right? Think about it. You just walk into a store. Excuse me, sir, can I help you find something? No, no, I'm just looking. It's a self-defense mechanism. In this meeting, you can't afford to have it go into self-defense mechanism. You have to have them wanting to meet with you. And the only way this works is if in step two, they do an amazing job of introducing you to where that other professional is really excited to meet with you because you've been pre-sold, right? The trust has already been transferred and they're excited to have this conversation with you, okay? So you're gonna meet with them as a peer, okay? now. This is less about you talking about your real estate accolades, what, how many homes you've sold, how great you and your, your team are. It's not about that. This is about you, because again, that's already been shared. They already know this about you. You're there as a peer, almost as a business consultant, looking for what's missing in their business. 
looking for what they need next to get to their next goal. Right? That's the purpose of you being there. Number one is to establish yourself as we're equals. Right? I'm not here with my hand out saying, oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for your referrals. No, that might work with your friends and clients. It does not work in a B2B setting. You're there to, to give value, not get value. So you're not even going to mention you want the referrals. You're there looking for what's missing, what's next in their business. Okay? We, we, we teach you how to be, in my coaching circles, we, we teach you almost how to, ha, how to have a series of questions that position you almost like as a business consultant. Tell me about your business. Right? And these questions help you to, to be different, to sound different, to where they're like, well, I've never had a conversation like this with a real estate agent. That's when you know you're winning, right? Step four, then, because when you, in step three, you identified what's, what's missing in their business. Step four, you get to now go to work to add value to their business, okay? So that's step four. You identify something could be that they had a marketing issue. Could be that they had, you know, um, like the staff shortages. It could be the fact that that um, wh whatever, right? Like something. And by the way, it probably will have nothing to do with what you do for a living. If you do this right, you're going to uncover something about their business that needs some attention. You're going to be able to give an introduction, whether an introduction to an idea, whether it's something that you're doing in your business that's working, whether somebody that you know, whether somebody that you could know. The opportunities are endless if you want it bad enough to be able to bring back and say, I've been thinking about you since we met and I have an idea. I have someone who I'd love you to meet who I believe will be of great value to your business. Would you be open to an introduction to this person, right? They're going to they're gonna feel different when they hear about you, step two. They're going to feel different when you meet in that meeting and you don't talk about yourself at all. You talk about them and their business and what their needs are, what their goals are, right? And, it's, and then they're going to be like totally blown away when you circle back and be like, hey, I've been thinking about what you said. I have an idea that I think would be of help to you. Okay. And you're bringing value to their business. Okay. Now this tees up step number five. Step number five, this is where all the magic's at, you guys, is where you bring value to their clients. Okay. Where you bring value to their clients. Okay. We're out of time, guys. So I'm going to be like one more minute and we'll wrap it up. So. When you're bringing value to their business, they're saying, man, I like this person in my business. Step five is I'm going to bring value to their clients because what happens here is when you find a way to bring value to their client experience, guess what? They want to put you in contact with their clients, right? They're not doing it because they know you like you, trust you, and boy, you gave me a referral, so I need to give you one now. That's the slow model. It works. It's just slow, right? What this allows them to do is say like, I want to put you in front of all my clients because you're helping, helping me to solve a problem for them. That's where all of a sudden the warm referrals start to flow and they want to put you in contact with all their clients. Um, again, I'm sure you may have questions. If I can answer them, hop on Instagram, happy to chat, happy to hop, hop on a quick Zoom call, give you 15 minutes and just answer your questions, help you take the next step. Um, we're out of time, you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Um, hopefully you followed all that. I know we were moving pretty fast. Justin, okay. I'm, I'm okay. sure, I'm, and, and thank you guys for understanding. I had some technical difficulties. This is why I'm outside. My internet is completely down. So thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, this should be provoking some thought. Um, I had an agent on the team who their uh, parents are actually lawyers, and they're always having people come in that need um, some help or have questions about listing their home or what are the next steps. And so um, she's providing them with a whole entire CMA, or excuse me, a high note presentation. These are the things that you need to start thinking about and prepping for. So I want you guys to start making your list and let's come back full conversation on this or full circle on this conversation. And like, I want to start hearing from you guys, like who are the people that you can get in front of right now? They're going to make your life a lot easier and give you the opportunity to make way more money. So, uh, Justin, I think we should probably do a round two on this because it's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but, um, do you guys have some thoughts right now? And did you guys find this helpful? I do. All right, cool. Um, so go ahead, Joellen. Um, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to Justin because he's speaking my language because I'm certified probate. So I just need to get to the non-medical home care, assisted living, 
in the probate attorney. So I need you to help me dial in my uh, my speech or whatever it is. I don't want to sound yes. like you know, drop my cards off. So yeah, I'm super excited to reach out to you. Thank you, Justin. I love it. I love it. You guys, we'll come full circle on this conversation. I'm going to hop into another meeting right now. But Justin, I can't thank you enough for being our guest today, for being here, for dropping gems, for putting us on game and really opening our mind up of, of what's possible and, and, and really looking at our business in a completely different way, man. So a lot of us know this, have thought about this, but now it's time to put some action uh, into place. So appreciate you, big dog. Thank you for being here. And my thank pleasure, you guys, guys. And thank you for everyone that helped me out with my technical difficulties. Appreciate y'all. Thanks all. Good to be with you all. Look forward to being in touch.